Okay, now we will go back to our uh, earlier problem. So, uh, we look at this one and say well uh, time domain sequence when they are different and this particular case happen to be the same. So, let us see how do actually we go about the process of sampling rate change. Uh, so, the question uh, to make sure if I understand you correctly. Now, if I take input sequence and I do a sampling rate change, I produce a, a new signal. In this particular case, x1 of n strictly does not satisfy the sampling rate change because it is, it is something which has got the correct sampling rate, but spectrally is not correct. So, how do you get the spectral uh, uh, correctness or how do you get the uh, same input signal, continuous time signal sampled at one frequency translated into a continue, the same continuous time signal trans, tra, at a different frequency. That is possible if you associate the uh, filtering with each of those steps. So, you must go back and look at we, we mentioned that at the beginning of the class that there is a combination of the filtering that is associated with the upsampling, there is a filtering that is associated with the downsampling. If we do both and in fact, uh, since you asked the question, it is a good place to answer that particular one. So, let us take case 1. Okay. So, I have let us say a signal at x of n which is at 12 kilohertz. Let us just uh, the spectrum looks like this minus 6 kilohertz to 6 kilohertz, it is sampled at 12 kilohertz. So, basically Nyquist sampling. So, this is 12 kilo, uh, this is 12 kilohertz. So, if I uh, expressed it in in terms of the uh, discrete time frequencies, this would be 2 pi, this would be pi minus pi. So, your signal is contained between minus pi to pi and you have sampled it at uh, the Nyquist rate. So, therefore, the spectrum is fully occupying the, uh, the, the space between minus pi to pi. Now, this is what I want to tr translate into uh, another signal through a process of sam fractional sampling rate change. So, this is a fractional sampling rate change, sampling rate conversion. Okay. And I want to get another signal which is x prime of n which is at 16 kilohertz. So, to answer your question what we are this is exactly the problem that we are trying to address. So, I want the original spectrum between minus 6 to 6 instead of being Nyquist sampled I now have a uh, gap because I have chosen to sample it at 16 kilohertz. So, this will be at 10 kilohertz. If this is 2 pi, this is this is pi and this corresponds to 8 kilohertz. Okay, so, this is corresponds to 8 kilohertz. So, there is a little bit of uh, spacing between the spectral copies. So, as, as, as we have mentioned, uh, we, we have to do uh, down sampling by a factor of 3, up sampling by a factor of 4. So, case 1 I would like to take up the down sampling by a factor of 3 that is down sampling first followed by the up sampling. We said that we must introduce the associated filtering. So, which means the actual implementation of this will be the anti alias filter, anti alias filter followed by down sampling by a factor of 3 followed by up sampling by a factor of 4 followed by the interpolation filter, interpolation filter which will remove the unwanted images, interpolation filter. Okay. So, this is the uh, sequence of operations. I just like to see what happens, what happens to the or, or input spectrum. So, that uh, so first of all, uh, if I want to down sample by a factor of 3, then the anti aliasing filter is already specified. Anti aliasing filter will go from minus pi by 3 to pi by 3, minus pi by 3 to pi by 3. Now, the problem is it is already at uh, sampled at Nyquist rate. So, input signal is sampled at Nyquist rate, but uh, I, you, if you tell me down sample by a factor of 3, I am going to apply the anti aliasing filter. So, the scenario is that the down sampling by a factor of 3, if pi corresponds to 6, basically this filter will keep from minus 2 kilohertz to 2 kilohertz, correct? And then it down samples by a factor of 3. 
So, now the spectrum at this point, spectrum at that point is going to be as follows dot 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 after the down sampling this is minus pi, this is pi and this is 2 pi. So, basically I have chopped off a portion of the spectrum because of the anti aliasing filter then the down sampling process basically uh, stretch the uh, signal and so now it is sitting between minus pi to pi ok. Now I do the up sampling by a factor of 4. So, at this point the spectrum is going to look like this input spectrum will get limited to pi by 4 to minus pi by 4 minus pi by 4 to pi by 4 that is the because it will be you will get z power 4 then I will get 3 copies that is k equal to 1, k equal to 2, k equal to 3 and then you get the 2 pi. So, just draw these lines. So, this corresponds to k equal to 0, k equal to 1, k equal to 2, k equal to 3 and the interpolation filter is going to go between minus pi by 4 to pi by 4 and remove everything else outside. So, all the way up to, so this will get removed, this will get removed, this will get removed. So, the reconstructed signal at this point has the following spectrum it has got from this to this corresponding frequency is minus 2 to 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 and at this point it has got the copy. This is at 16, this is at 14, this is at 18. Let us evaluate what we have done. I hope you are uh, comfortable with uh, what, what has been drawn. The, there was one image between 2 and 6, a second image between 6 and 10, a third image between 10 and 14. Those three got those three got removed through the filtering process. Now, is your sampling rate 16 kilohertz final sampling rate? Sampling rate 16 kilohertz. The answer is yes, right? You can give a tick mark for that. Uh, did you avoid aliasing? So, condition of no aliasing tick mark yes because we did the filtering the correct way with the anti aliasing filter no distortion of the signal or basically did we get what we wanted to get the answer is no distortion the answer is a big no and and, and the reason is anytime you do down sampling first there is a risk of loss of information which is very nicely uh, illustrated that yes you did lose information because you did the anti aliasing filtering uh, you did not run into aliasing problems but the pri price that we paid was that there is a loss of information. Now on the other hand had you done the uh, up sampling first very interesting to see you know and it just we will just draw it very quickly. So if you had done the up sampling by a factor of 4 followed by the interpolation filter, interpolation filter then you have to follow it by the down sampling. So, the down sampling says pass it through the anti aliasing filter first, a, a filter first followed by the down sampling process. Make sure that there are no, uh, make sure that your input signal is band limited to pi by 3 to pi by 3 and then do the down sampling and then you should get the signal that is of interest to us. Okay, so, uh, here is a quick run through of the, just we will just do it in the spectral domain that, that uh, helps us. So, the first step after the up sampling process, I get 4 copies of the signal. So, the input signal was at 12 kilohertz. So, when I up sample by a factor of 4, it became 48 kilohertz. So, this is still uh, 6 kilohertz minus 6, this has now become 2 pi for me. Okay. If this is 2 pi, then this point is pi by 4. Am I right? If this is 2 pi, this point is pi by 4. So, the first stage of the process is here. Now, the second stage after the interpolation filter 
interpolation filter says it is it's a, a brick wall filter from minus pi by 4 to pi by 4 which will then remove all of these images and then retain for you this one. So at this point the spectrum looks like this it is minus 6 to 6 with a sampling rate of 48 kilohertz or you can you can uh, write it in discrete time. Uh, so this corresponds to 2 pi this corresponds to pi by 4 and pi by 2 is in uh, pi is somewhere in the middle okay uh, it is not strictly to scale. Now what is the role of the anti-aliasing filter? Anti-aliasing filter says whatever is the input signal that is coming in filter off from minus pi by 3 to pi by 3 okay minus pi by 3 to pi by 3 is 48 is 2 pi, pi is 16, uh, pi is 24. So it is actually between minus 8 to 8 kilohertz that is the anti-aliasing filter. Now is anti-aliasing filter doing anything at all? There is nothing for it to filter because already the interpolation filter took care of it right. So this is actually redundant. It really did not do anything in terms of the. So then I do the down sampling. Down sampling basically says that uh, this frequency which corresponds to 8 kilohertz which is actually the uh, uh, pi by 3. Pi by 3 will become the same as pi okay. So effectively what happens at the output of the down sampling process input signal goes from minus 6 to 6 minus 8 to 8 this actually becomes the new pi because of the frequency stretching this is minus pi okay and then a another copy of the signal will be there at 2 pi another copy of the signal at 2 pi if this is 8 2 pi will be 16 16 kilohertz okay let me write this one in green and in red let us write the 16 kilohertz okay which is exactly what we wanted. So uh, 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 the two things to remember always keep the interpolation or upsampling with the corresponding filter because those two go hand in hand in the sampling rate conversion process. Even if it is just an integer, integer sampling uh, rate conversion uh, we prefer to look at it not just as inserting of zero valued samples we would like to look at it as insertion of zero valued samples followed by filtering so that you get the interpolated signal. Likewise down sampling is more straightforward because you just retain some samples but we always associate an anti-aliasing filter if you want to make sure that you do not want to run into the uh, distortions caused by the uh, uh, aliasing. So this is a uh, uh, very useful uh, hopefully interesting uh, example and exercise. Now the next uh, step that I want you to look at maybe you can start to take a look at this um, uh, by yourself case two of our uh, earlier discussion case one uh, special case one was L equal to M. So now what I would like you to do is go back to uh, th that particular example and look at case two where L not equal to M L not equal to M. Now uh, just like we did last time please get the expression for y1 of z get the expression for y2 of z and obviously we should be able to uh, they will not be the same uh, um, in, in general but there will be special cases where they will be the same and that special case must satisfy must be satisfied by this uh, m equal to 3 and l equal to 4 that, that is one example where we saw that the output signals are the same. So uh, please do uh, take a look at this and uh, we will build on this in the uh, lectures going forward. So let me just conclude with uh, a, a important point that we keep in mind as we go. So what are the building blocks? that you have encountered in DSP, building blocks in DSP. You have encountered delays, right? You have encountered delays, you have encountered addition blocks, you have encountered a scale scaling. If you take alpha, if this is x of n, 
this is alpha times x of uh, uh, x of n a scale factor so this is input and output and of course you would have also encountered multiplication multiplication this block we have to leave out because we are dealing with time varying blocks so uh, delays is actually going to cause a problem now this block does not cause any problems in a multi rate context this one does not cause any problem this one does not cause any problem so basically any interconnection of these three elements along with the multi rate blocks the multi rate blocks are up sampling by a factor of l down sampling by a factor of m the most general forms this combination is going to be the powerful one that we are going to work with. Now when delays come into play then we have to be a little bit careful. So for, for us the uh, interconnection of these building blocks with the multi rate blocks we will just sort of show that all of the properties that uh, you have with these three blocks carry forward into the, uh, in, into the multi rate domain. Basically addition means linearity. Uh, scaling again refers to linearity and multiplication is a uh, memoryless operation which you can do with the, uh, with the in the presence of multi rate blocks as well. So uh, we will expand on this expand on the fact that uh, when can you interchange the uh, down sampling and up sampling and then how do you extend it now beyond the just the building blocks into domains where you have uh, filtering also into play basically these delay elements also coming into play. So uh, those will be the next step that we will be looking at thank you.